in the last stream, we worked our way through every single boss in the Twilight Forest, defeating all of them, and finally acquiring the Lamp of Cinders. And then right at the very end of the last stream, we crafted up this ultimate crafting table. And if I'm not mistaken, we also began crafting the Quantum Compressor, which we do now have this guy right here. The Quantum Compressor, of course, is going to allow us to start making singularities because now that we are in the end game, we're in the creative quest line here. Our final goals are to craft up the remaining creative items. To do that, we're going to need both the ultimate singularity. I believe we need two of these, one for the infinite storage part and one for the infinite fluid storage part. Each of these recipes only require the one ultimate singularity. And so thankfully, I think we're only going to need two of each singularity to, uh, to complete the pack. And then down here, in order to make some of these creative items, we're going to need the ultimate ingots, these guys right here. To make these, we need the ultimate crafting table and one of almost every ingot in the pack. And this is really what I want to work on in today's stream, I'm hoping that by the end of today's stream, we will have a creative capacitor, which will essentially give us unlimited power to do with as we like for the remainder of the pack. The tricky part about this recipe isn't really the ultimate ingots, it's the number of HV capacitors required, because in order to make the creative capacitor, we need four ultimate catalysts. Each ultimate catalyst requires 80 HV capacitors. That's not too bad in and of itself because the HV capacitors, they're just steel, lead, aluminum, treated wood, and redstone. The tricky part about this is that we need 320 HV capacitors, 80 per ultimate catalyst, and every single one of these has to be fully charged. When you craft it, it's empty, right? You put it down, it has no power in it. We have one, um, I believe, over in our power room on top of our diesel generator, this guy right here. It starts empty. We have to fill all 320 of them with 4 million redstone flux in order to actually use them to craft the creative capacitor. Now, thankfully, there are ways to automate this. And as the quest says here, it says all of the capacitors need to be fully charged. It's not annoying if you automate crafting, charging, and breaking them. I see that the uh, the pet creator probably had a little bit of feedback that this was a little annoying, but they are indeed correct in that it's not too annoying if you automate the recipe. So basically, I think what we're going to have to do here is request a constructor from refined storage. And I believe we might already have a destructor. We totally do, fantastic. And we're also going to want to teach our system how to make those HV capacitors, because of course we are gonna have to request uh, 320 of them. That does remind me that we are also going to need to reset up quite a lot of our coke ovens as well. Thankfully, we do have a ton of coke brick from all of the coke ovens that we set up previously, uh, but we're almost certainly going to want to reset up a lot of those, uh, partly for all of the treated wood that's going to be required to make the HV capacitors, but uh, we are also going to need quite a bit, um, or at least a couple, of hop graphite ingots in order to make, I believe it's the eight ultimate ingots that we're going to need in order to craft up the HV capacitor as well. And just like before, when we were making the uh, arc furnace, we do need the uh, hot graphite dust to make the hot graphite ingots. And we get that through squeezing coke dust, which we get by crushing coal coke from that coke oven. So we do need both the coal coke and the creosote. Uh, thankfully, we do have quite a lot of coal, almost 50,000 ready to go. And between streams, what I have gone ahead and done is dug out this area right here so that this side of the base is now a perfect mirror of this side of the base that we've had for quite a while here. It has been a while since I played Cave Factory and the Twitch chat has reminded me, of course, that we do get unlimited creosote oil via the use of the creative fluid tank. So I don't actually have to get all of the creosote. That way we only have to get one bucket's worth, but we are still going to need quite a bit of uh, coal coke in order to get the uh, the hop graphite ingots required but uh, essentially what i've done is i have dug out the create section of the base so previously we had our crushing wheels here uh, we had our fans that were processing resources at this point now that we have the ability to make as many creative fluid tanks as we like and in fact uh, we did go ahead and request 10 creative fluid tanks at the end of the last episode now that we have these i don't really think that we need that 
early game resource production system that we had before. And my plan going forward is to set up a line of creative fluid tanks going down into casting basins or casting tables to produce basically all of the resources that we're going to need to finish the pack. Uh, much like we've done before, we can just have one creative fluid tank that we then pipe into a basin. Uh, for example, if we had a creative fluid tank full of modern iron, we can then pump that into a basin. That's going to make us infinite blocks of iron. We can then pump those into a compacting drawer. And if we hook all of those compacting drawers up to our refined storage system, we then have access to basically infinite iron. And we can do the same thing for gold, uranium, diamonds, emeralds, etc. Almost all of the resources that we're going to need. And so I have torn down basically everything that was here. I haven't moved the uh, windmill bearing, but uh, we probably will end up moving this. Uh, for the time being, this is just here for when we need to do these uh, big recipes like this. We can just tack that on uh, and use the, uh, the pre-existing uh, kinetic energy that we're producing from this windmill bearing. But uh, other than that, everything else I think is basically the same. I have moved a few things that were previously like here round into this wall. So again, nothing's really changed here. Uh, we still have our rainbow furnace. It's still got a crafter and an ender chest to feed back to the system. We've still got our system here that can produce uh, an infinite amount of lava and also lava buckets. And then of course over here, we also have our compact machine that is producing gold, netherrack, nether quartz, and netherite. So back over here, now that we have the constructor, what we should be able to do, do we have any uh, creosote oil? We do not have any treated wood. We do not. Okay, so actually, real quick, let's go and get down at least one coke oven, although I think I will set up quite a few of these. We can use this wall over here for the time being. Uh, these are probably almost certainly not going to be uh, permanent fixtures because we're not really going to need them uh, for the long term, and I think we are going to need the wall space for the sheer number of creative fluid tanks that we're going to need in the future. For now though, if we go ahead and get ourselves one bucket of creosote, once we have one bucket worth of creosote, we can then bring that over and throw it into a creative fluid tank. We'll drop that down right about here for now, like so. At that point, we of course have unlimited creosote, and so all we have to do then is grab ourselves some oak, which we don't really have too much of. We could definitely do with uh, improving our oak supply. But uh, for now, let's just get a few treated planks and let's go ahead and see if we can't make our first HV capacitor. So the idea here for automation is that we've taught our system how to make the HV capacitors. If we craft up enough treated planks, we can then just request 320 of these. From there, what we should be able to do is if we drop down the constructor and destructor, which we'll do uh, like that and like that, what we then should be able to do is tell the constructor to place down HV capacitors. Now, the important part here is that we want to make sure that we have exact mode on for the constructor because we only want it to place down empty HV capacitors. And with exact mode on, it will only place down a capacitor that is the exact same as the one I just put in, that being a brand new, untouched, unfilled capacitor, which is exactly what we're after. Over here on the destructor, we then want to make sure that we also have exact mode on, but here we want to grab our full HV capacitor, which is this guy over here. And if we put that into the destructor, what that should do is tell it to only break the capacitor that's here once it is completely full on power. So let's give it a try. If we put the HV capacitor here into the system, it gets placed down. It then did get broken instantly, which is not Oh no, okay, so I do this every time. You got a whitelist. So let's try this again. This is empty. And so now if we get a flux point, we can drop that down on top of the HV capacitor, like so. Set that to our network as per usual. And that should start filling up the HV capacitor. Now we are limited here by how quickly we're producing power. Uh, right now we're producing about 4,096 redstone flux per tick. However, we can only use a portion of that because of course some of that uh, 4,096 RF per tick is being used by the rest of the machines in our base. But what we should see happen here once the number in the top left there gets to 4 million is we should see the destructor break the HV capacitor and in an ideal world, a brand new HV capacitor would be placed down. So if we quickly make a new HV capacitor here and drop it in, that is full, but not breaking. Item whitelist exact mode on types. I think the problem that we might run into here, I'm gonna break this one. This one hasn't been picked up. I think the trouble is that the one that we have over here has been configured. So like the front there is set to an output and therefore this is not the exact same. 
So I think what we might have to do is change this so that the destructor doesn't use this HV capacitor, it uses this one. So if I click here, that should swap it. And so now hopefully when this one fills up, we should see uh, we should see it get broken. And then uh, if we quickly craft up another one of these here, we should then see it uh, get placed down automatically. So once it hits 4 million, it is indeed broken and a brand new one goes down. Nice. So we have in fact automated this setup right here. So now if we were to request 320 of the uh, HV capacitors, we should in theory start to charge those up. And I don't think it's gonna take too long to fill these. Now, we could of course make it faster by generating more power, which we could do in a number of ways. And uh, we might in fact look into that potentially. We could make another diesel generator and put it down here. That would double our power output from uh, 4,096 uh, up to 8,192. Uh, we could also look at making a big reactor one mod that I completely forgot or completely overlooked is uh, Extreme Reactors. We do have Extreme Reactors in the packet, so we could set up an Extreme Reactor that we then fuel with Uranium, which we can, of course, make an infinite amount of with a uh, creative fluid tank. And then that, in turn, can produce quite a large amount of redstone flux that would speed up uh, this process here. But uh, essentially, what I am going to do now is I'm going to quickly see about whipping up enough treated wood to get 320 HV capacitors or 321 HV capacitors. You do also need one for the final recipe here as well. Once we have about 640 treated wooden planks, we can then go ahead and request 320 HV capacitors, at which point this system here should begin uh, instantly charging up all of those HV capacitors ready for us to craft them into the ultimate catalysts. So not too long later, the Twitch chat recommended the jerry can here as a way to quickly craft a large amount of treated wood. It's super easy to make. It's four buckets and four iron plates. And uh, basically, once you have this, instead of having to do one bucket at a time and only being able to do eight treated wood at a time, you can just put in a jerry can, which says it can hold 10,000 millibuckets, but only ever seems to get 8,000 whenever I try to fill it up. But then if you put the jerry can into the crafting grid, you can craft a stack of treated wooden planks at a time because it effectively holds eight buckets worth of creosote. Now, you may be wondering why I've made so many of these jerry cans, and the answer is that I actually only made one jerry can, but there seems to be a, a bug with the creative fluid tank here, because every time I right-click a jerry can onto the creative fluid tank, it empties the creative fluid tank, but it also duplicates the jerry can. So if I right-click here, I get an extra jerry can, and it fills one up with water, so I can refill it, get a new one, refill it, get a new one, refill it, get a new one, and suddenly my inventory is, is slowly but surely filling up with, with jerry cans, because it doesn't actually take the one that I'm using, it just duplicates it and makes a new one. I don't know if this is a bug or if this is how it's intended to be used, but we have more jerry cans. Not that extra jerry cans are helpful in any way, shape, or form. In fact, they do nothing really other than clog up our inventory and our system uh, unnecessarily, but uh, they do make it uh, quite a bit easier to um, to craft all of this treated wood. Uh, we need 640, so we actually have uh, enough already. I'll make a little extra just to be safe. We can do like one or two more jerry cans here, and by that I mean one more jerry can because we are now basically out of planks. But now that we have 698 treated wood, I'm hopeful that we can request about 320 HV capacitors. We can, we're just missing, of course, the aluminum, the steel, and the lead. And so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and start digging out the wall here and start setting up the creative fluid tank. I think we might need quite a bit more space than this here though, but so we'll have the creative fluid tank into casting basin, into compacting drawer setup. And if we start by doing that for steel, aluminum, and lead, that should allow us to very quickly get all of the steel, all of the aluminum, and all of the lead that we're going to need in order to make all of the HV capacitors. So the system here is exactly the same as before. We take a bucket, we then use the smeltery here. Uh, it takes seven ingots, just shy of seven ingots, uh, to get a bucket of whatever molten liquid you're after. I'll also put in the aluminum here. We do already have uh, a bucket of molten steel from earlier in the playthrough. Um, and then, has that gone into like a hopper beneath? It has, there we go. So we'll grab that as well. And then over here, 
we're basically going to duplicate this setup right here. So we're going to have molten lead, for example. That molten lead is then going to be extracted down. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, look at upgrading this pipe so it extracts a bit faster. Um, and also we could, if we wanted to, use multiple casting basins. But uh, I think that given that this is going to be running basically 24-7, that uh, this one basin here should be fine. That's going to then go down into a compacting drawer, and we have unlimited lead. So basically, all we're going to do now is we're going to copy and do the exact same thing right next to it here. So we're going to go creative tank into casting basin into compacting draw like that. This time, though, we'll have steel at the top. We'll do the same here with the fluid pipe. Uh, we want to make sure that those disconnect. So we'll make sure these don't connect in the middle like that. Uh, make sure you do that when your basins are full. Otherwise, you'll end up with a little bit of uh, juice in your basin that you're not after. Not the end of the world. You can always break it, but just easier to avoid altogether. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll set that to extract. That is going to get this filled with lead. That's fine. We can take the lead out and move it over into there. And then at that point, if we set this to extract and it's already set to extract, we also now have unlimited steel. And of course, we can do the exact same thing here with aluminum. And once we have the molten aluminum, we can then come back over and do the exact same thing. Boom. And there we go. We have unlimited aluminum as well. So it shouldn't really take too long for us to get all of the lead, steel, and aluminum that we're going to need in order to make the HV capacitors. While we wait for those to uh, do their work, though, and get us all the lead, steel, and uranium, uh, lead, steel, and aluminum that we're going to need, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to continue this pattern for basically everything else that we're going to need. Looking at the ultimate singularity here, we're going to need a few of them. So each singularity requires 5,000 of a given item. We need two of every singularity. So we need 10,000 of each item on this list. Thankfully, most of the singularities here can be acquired through this creative tank method because most of these have a molten form. So Electrum, uh, Steel, Lapis doesn't. Uh, lapis, we need 10,000 Lapis. I think we have 10,000 Lapis. We do. So Lapis, Coal, and Redstone, these can't be melted, but we already have almost 50,000 of each of those. So we don't need to worry about those. Uh, uranium, we're making. Emeralds, you can melt. We'll, we'll set one up for emeralds. Coal, we have. Cactus, we're going to have to grow. The same is true for kelp and dried kelp. Redstone, we have. Slates, we're going to have to make. We're going to have to request. And like, we're going to have to request 10,000 blank slates. That might take a little while, but it should be very doable. Aluminum, we're going for. Uh, wood is basically just cobblestone. So if we set up a cobblestone generator, we can then just drop the cobble on the floor. It turns into wood. And then we pump that wood into the quantum compressor. So getting 10,000 wood shouldn't be a problem. Silver, easy enough. That's also just a molten uh, recipe. The same is true for diamonds, copper, iron, lead, nickel, and I think that's it. So dried kelp and regular kelp and cactus can be grown. Uh, glowstone could be the trickiest one of all. We don't have much glowstone, and we've not actually been making glowstone. Uh, and then andesite is just iron, which we can melt, and andesite, which we can make. So none of these really seem too difficult. Uh, glowstone could be the hardest, but I think we can... We can grind torches to get glowstone. It's only a 25% chance, which would mean that we would need uh, 40,000 torches, which is doable. That's only 10,000 coal. And again, we do have 50,000 coal. So we could do that. Uh, we could also go and try and mine some, which we might end up doing with something like the uh, builder from RF Tools. The builder here, you can put into quarry mode using a quarry card. And then if we filter for glowstone, we could just go to the nether and try and mine out a bunch of glowstone that way. That might be a faster way of getting 10,000 glowstone. I'm not entirely certain. And of course, if we really wanted to, we could also turn 10,000 redstone into 10,000 glowstone using Batania as well. Any one of those methods would indeed work. But basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through here and I'm going to set up at least one uh, creative tank for each of the singularities here that we can get from a molten bucket. All right, so not too long later, the last two here are silver and nickel. And I think this is a lot less than 11. We only have, what, nine here? But I think that's fine because the last two that we need are diamond and emerald. And again, we only need 10,000 of each and we already have... 16,000 emeralds and 16,000 diamonds. So I think this right here should be everything we need to get the ultimate singularities going. We might need a few more creative tanks um, with a few more basins like this for other resources that we just need more of if there's like an ingot that's not been used here. But uh, for the most part, uh, in terms of the ultimate singularities, this should be everything that we need. So let's quickly set all of these to extract. Let's grab our uh, draw key, which I think is actually in my backpack here, and then we can lock all of these to their respective ingots, just so we don't get any confusion. Um, it looks like there is a bit of confusion on copper 
uranium and silver here. Let me try something real quick. If I craft that down and then craft that down again, if I put like, um, if I take all the copper out and I put a nugget in, that does work, but I don't know if that's going to work continually. Let's give it a look. So right now there's one block in there. Once this block solidifies, I wonder if that does go down or not. It looks like it's not going to. That's a little awkward. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, that's okay. We can take that out and then I guess. Right. That's weird. The fact that it doesn't uh, doesn't convert correctly. But that's fine. We can teach our system how to craft those down. Uh, these three here if we need them in the future. I have gone ahead and made a draw controller. So we can uh, go ahead and drop that down right in the middle. Might as well throw it down right about here. Like that. And then I've also got an external storage. And so of course all we have to do is drop the external storage onto the draw controller. And then from there we need to connect that up to our main system. I think there's a cable running through here. There is. It's right there. So we'll just continue that along over to that uh, that draw controller and to this external storage. At which point we will then have full access to all of the uh, the infinite ingots. So this is connected up. Um, as per usual, we can set the priority uh, higher on this, even though I don't foresee us pumping any items uh, really in to those drawers. But uh, for now, let's go ahead and fill the floor in again real quick. And uh, people have suggested in the Twitch chat using uh, an upgrade that I didn't know existed until today, the conversion upgrade also converts compatible items. So the idea I assume here, if this works, is that it might be able to convert the copper blocks we're getting into the copper blocks we need. So if I take that out, oh, but now it works anywhere? But it's only showing two, it's clearly broken because it should be showing a lot more than two, um, two ingots. I'm not quite sure what's up with that. Let's go ahead and craft it into this and then uh, let's take that out again. If I put this in, that's a different block. Still no nuggets. That's fine. We don't really need the nuggets. But now there's no ingots. Oh, no, there we go. Okay, it is working. Let's put uh, this in. And then now if I put these in. That still doesn't work, eh? Maybe they're not, uh, not conversionable. Okay, so it's a little weird. If you just put the copper block in, which is what this does by default, it seems to sometimes not like it. Like here, it's it's kind of busted. It still shows zero copper ingots there, when it, and it should so, show you know nine ingots. Uh, but it seems like if you take a block and then convert it into like by default it does a create ingot. If you convert it into a copper ingot by using this button from Tinkers, we can then put the copper ingot in. At which point we can then put all of the copper blocks in, and it works just fine. I don't know what the problem is there, but that seems to be to be working. The same thing might be true here if we put like the ingot in first and then the rest of the blocks. Maybe now it's just going to work fine going forward. And then again, the potential of the same thing's true here as well. If we put the ingot in first, then the rest of the blocks, it seems to register just fine. Not quite sure what that's about, but nevertheless, we have all of this connected up now. And so the question becomes, do we have what it takes to request 320 HV capacitors? We are missing uh, 98 lead blocks. We can accelerate this system if we want here. We have some more um, seared brick. And so if we just made a few more casting basins, we could temporarily place down a few more of these. It does look very janky, but again, this is uh, the keyword is temporarily. And this should allow us to accelerate our lead block production just until we have enough lead blocks. All right, and once we have over 320 lead blocks, we should then be able to request uh, 320 HV capacitors, start and start, and the craft should complete, yeah, look at that, almost instantly. It's very, very fast. And so now, this is part of the bottleneck. This is gonna slowly but surely uh, turn all of our HV capacitors into fully charged HV capacitors. The only trouble is how long it takes to do it. So uh, we need to fill, quick bit of maths here, we need four million Redstone Flux is what we need. Right now we're doing that at about 3,500 Redstone Flux per tick, which means at the current speed, it's gonna take 1,142 ticks in order to fill up each H3 capacitor. There are 20 ticks per second, so we divide by 20. That leads to 57 seconds, so it's about a minute per H3 capacitor, which is not great, because that means that in order to fill all of these up, we're gonna need 300 and 20 minutes, which divided by 60 is uh, about five 
6.3 hours, which is not ideal. Five hours and 20 minutes is uh, it's a long time. Like, we could leave it between now and next episode, but I think it's going to be uh, better if we can make this a bit faster. So I think we are going to go with the Extreme Reactor. We could make another diesel generator. Uh, that would give us another 4,096 red sun flux per tick, but uh, that would only really cut the time in half. It would still take over two hours in order for it to get done. It would take like two, hour, two and a half hours, uh, maybe two hours, 40 minutes or something. Um, and so I think what we'll probably do here is make a nice, wide Extreme Reactor that we can then feed the uranium that we're getting from our unlimited uranium tank over here. So back over here, we're going to teach our system how to make a few of these components here. The way that you build an Extreme Reactor, uh, there are two tiers, by the way, of Extreme Reactor. Uh, there's the basic tier, and then there is the reinforced tier. So all of the parts of a reactor can be made either in their basic form, like basic reactor glass or basic casing or basic controller, or in the reinforced form. With the basic form, you can't build bigger than a 5x5x5 five by five by five reactor. So the default, uh, like biggest you can do is 5x5x5. Five by five by five. If you want to make bigger than that, you have to go with the reinforced casing, the reinforced controller. Everything has to be reinforced. So let's go ahead and teach our system how to make the reinforced casing. It's made with steel, graphite, and an iron block in code. The only thing there that we do not have is graphite. Also, let me clear my inventory out just a little bit. We don't have to be carrying all of these buckets around with us. The graphite is made by smelting coal like this. And of course, we do have our rainbow furnace over here. So we can just whack that in like so. And that's basically it for the frame of the reactor. So the, the front, back, top, bottom, left and right are made using reactor casing. You can substitute reactor casing for reactor glass. Uh, it does look a little bit nicer. How much glass do we have? We've got loads of glass, so I will go ahead and teach the system how to make uh, advanced reactor glass. Uh, by advanced, I mean reinforced, like so. Uh, and we'll probably try and make the front of our reactor out of reactor glass, just to make it look a little bit nicer. And then, from there, inside of the reactor, we need a combination of reactor fuel rods. The more fuel rods you have, the more fuel you can burn. Uh, coolants, because uh, if you don't cool the fuel rods, they become less efficient um, and would waste more and, and would use more resources to produce the same amount of power. So you can cool them as well. And then we'd also need a controller and some ports for taking the energy out and putting the items in. So we're going to go the full length of the back wall here because we do want to produce quite a large amount of redstone flux. And I think we'll just go one from the top. Actually, I guess we might as well go all the way to the top, right? We've gone all the way to the floor there, so we'll go all the way to the roof as well here. And then we'll go a couple of blocks back. We're not going to go crazy on this. Like, you can go very big. Um, I think the maximum size might be like 40 by 40 by 40 or something along those lines, maybe 47. Um, it's very big. But uh, at that point, we would need a staggering amount of, uh, of iron and of coal as well, which uh, would not be ideal. So we'll just go a couple of blocks back. Uh, we'll maybe go five, maybe seven. So I've dug out seven deep here. So right now we've got uh, a reactor that's 15 wide, eight tall, and seven blocks deep. I don't know how much power this is going to produce. Hopefully quite a, a hefty amount. Uh, some quick maths says that we need, I think, about 562 reactor casing, which is a little bit more steel and a little bit more iron than we currently have. It's nowhere near as much coal as I thought, which is uh, very good. Indeed, of course, that doesn't include the uh, the fuel rods just yet. Uh, that is fine. We can, of course, go ahead and redirect our additional firepower here away from lead and apply that over to uh, to iron and maybe a little bit to uh, to steel as well. It's probably also going to be worth. I uh, I did go ahead. Let's uh, disconnect that real quick. Um, I did go ahead and add a pipe upgrade to this guy, which means this does fill a lot faster. You see it fills almost instantly, whereas like the uh, the steel one here, or even the silver one, uh, once it uh, it empties, it does take a little longer to fill up. It's not a crazy difference, but it does make this like a fair bit faster, and this is definitely going to produce a lot more blocks per hour with that little bit of an edge um, in terms of uh, extracting the fluid, and I think I even ex uh, sped up, yeah, the extraction of the, uh, of the block as well. So I might go ahead and quickly teach our system how to make the, uh, the pipe upgrades here. Unfortunately, you do have to go through all of them, so we are going to have to teach it the basic, and then the gold tier, and then the advanced tier, which is really the tier that we're after, uh, if we throw that in over here. So if I request 16 of these, start and start, we can then go ahead and basically upgrade all of these to be uh, to be a good deal faster. 
All right, so I've gone a little crazy on the uh, the basins here. We needed quite a bit of iron, so we've added quite a few there. We'll obviously get rid of these uh, when they're no longer needed. Uh, right now, we're getting close. I think we have the amount of iron that we need. Yeah, we're just waiting on um, on steel now, which shouldn't take too, too long. While we wait for that, we can come over here, and we can start teaching our system some of the other recipes required, like the uh, fuel rod. Again, we do want to make sure that we have the reinforced variant of the fuel rod there. Again, not too difficult. We've got the glass. We'll have the steel. The graphite is makeable, and the uranium we should also have there, so we'll encode that. Uh, we've already encoded the reactor glass. I don't really think we're going to need to encode things like the controller. Again, we only need to make one of those, so that's not going to be a problem. And then we do need quite a few of these uh, controller rods, so I will go ahead and encode that as well. That is going to require a little bit of extra casing, but I think we, uh, we should be fine on that as well. So let's drop those in. And I think that's basically it. Again, we are going to need some... Uh, access ports here uh, for the fuel and for the power to come out of but i think that should be fine again we can make those individually we don't need to go ahead and teach our system how to make those we can just craft them as and when we need them so really now we just need to uh, to wait until we have enough steel to make 562 casing although i guess we can start by going ahead and requesting like maybe 300 and then uh, just begin throwing down the reactor and uh, we're basically going to start by just filling in the uh, the outside frame so everything but the front is just going to be a solid wall of reactor casing. So it looks like the thing slowing us down here is the uh, is how fast we can import graphite bars. That's slowing down how fast we can make the reactor casing. And so it's probably going to be worth quickly teaching the system how to make speed upgrades and how to make stack upgrades as well. That way we can request our uh, three speed upgrades and one stack upgrade, and we can throw that onto the importer here, and that's gonna maximize how fast the uh, the importer can pull items uh, into the system. Um, it does also need to know how to make the regular upgrade, that is fine. Um, I think I will go ahead and cancel this craft, because I'm pretty sure that the system's gonna need that furnace in order to, uh, to make the upgrades here, and uh, it's gonna have to wait like three years for that if we, uh, if we don't empty the furnace out first. So well, there are our speed upgrades, and there's our stack upgrade. The speed upgrades do what they say on the tin. They increase the speed of the importer, and the stack upgrade switches it from pulling one item at a time to pulling a stack of items at a time. And if you combine both of those, it uh, pulls a stack of items much faster than it would before. So now if we go back and we try another 300 casing, start and start, we should hopefully see the casing being produced a lot faster because it's being smelted here much quicker and then being exported as well. Now... It's possible that it's also maybe not a terrible idea to upgrade this crafter here to a higher tier crafter. Um, although it looks like we have got all the casing right away. Um, so maybe it's not worth it. Although, can we just request one? We totally can. Upgrading to a higher tier crafter just means that it's going to um, be faster. You'll see that in the top left there, the current speed of this crafter is 5x, whereas the gold crafter is uh, maybe like 20x. Never mind, it's also 5x. Can we go with a diamond crafter? The Diamond Crafter is, uh, is 25 times faster, and then the Netherite Crafter is, of course, insanely fast, but I think the Diamond Crafter is probably going to be fine. The Basic Crafter was already quite fast, especially with the speed upgrades here, so if we just replace that with uh, a Diamond Crafter that is uh, 25 times faster, or I guess 5 times faster than, um, than the old Crafter, right? Because this one says 5x, this one says 25x, so 5 times faster with a bunch more slots, that should do us just fine. Uh, can we make like an extra 200 casing? Do we have the steel? We totally do. Fantastic. Again, that should hopefully be much, much faster now. And should allow us hopefully to uh, to get this reactor down fairly quickly. So this is our reactor case. It's very hollow at the moment, but that's fine. So again, the front now is, I guess, uh, 13 by 6. So we need 78 reactor glass. Again, that should be fine. We've got uh, enough glass and we've got enough casing. So we'll go ahead and just request all of those. Fantastic. And we can put basically all of these down. We just need to leave uh, enough of a gap for us to still be able to get in. And then after that, we uh, do need to cut some holes in the roof for the control rods. Um, I've apparently miscalculated there. That is... Oh, no, I haven't. I just uh, didn't pull all of the, the glass out, right? Yeah, no, there's 14 left. There we go. So in here... We now need some fuel rods, uh, and I think we're going to need over 100 of these, so I'll just go ahead and request 100 right out of the gate. And then uh, we also need the uh, the caps as well, that are not called caps, they are called controllers. These guys right here, we're going to need less of these, 
we'll go with 13. And basically, the uh, the fuel rods are going to go down in a, a crisscross pattern. Like this, all the way along the uh, the, the reactor. And we're going to go all the way up as well, like uh, like this. And then at the very top of the reactor, that is where the, uh, the control rods come in. So you take your control rods and you place those at the top of a pillar of fuel rods. So if we get rid of this, we put this down, we run this all the way to the top, like so. That is how we want it to go. And then we need to do that all the way throughout the entirety of the reactor. Thankfully, once we have all of these down, we can just wand the rest of them up. And then we do also need to, uh, to put a coolant in here. It will work without a coolant. And in fact, I might start it up without coolant and see how it goes. And then we can always look at adding a coolant if the power is not uh, is not sufficient. It looks like I was a little shy with the uh, 30 control rods. We need uh, three more. That should be perfectly fine. And then I think I might have also been a little shy with the, uh, the fuel rods as well. I imagine we might need uh, a few more than 100 of those. I'm going to go ahead and just request another 100 here because I think that's going to be, even then, that might be on the uh, on the low side, given how many we've already filled in. Of course, you don't have to put down this many control rods. You could, if you wanted to build a reactor this big, and then just put one line of control rods in and leave the rest empty. That would work, um, although it would be uh, quite inefficient. So, well, let's see here. If we get our wand, can we build this up? We totally can. So, uh, we do need to be able to escape. So, let's go ahead and do this. Thankfully, you do get the glass back. It doesn't get destroyed, which is uh, is very nice. So that's level one, two, three, four, and yeah, we should be fine. Five. Beautiful. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, fill the remaining glass in here. Then we are going to need to get a controller. Uh, thankfully, we do have some extra casing. It looks like I made way too much, but that, again, is fine. If we type in reinforced, it should just come up with the stuff we need. So the reinforced controller uh, seems easy enough. We do need some Eulorium, which we might just be able... I was going to say we might be able to craft from Uranium, but that could actually be a problem if we can't craft Eulorium. Oh, no, never mind. I'm, I'm a fool. There's a, a recipe down here that uses Uranium and, uh, and not Eulorium. So we just need to get a Redstone Comparator. That is fine. We made one of these earlier for the, uh, the new draw controller. So boom, that is done. And then, boom, we almost have a controller. We're just missing a block of diamond. Easy enough. And there we go. And I think this might form the reactor, even though the reactor is not, uh, like, in a working state just yet. But if we do something like this, yeah, it does. Nice. And we get this nice, uh, clear, like, front panel here, which is very nice indeed. So now, uh, this is the uh, GUI for the reactor. We need to get a port that's going to allow us to... Uh, also, real quick, can I turn off, like, the, the basin sound? What's it? It's like the Minecraft, like, <laughs> what's it called? It might be uh, casting cools or extinguishing. I think it's both of those. I think the extinguishing sound is, uh, is what I'm hearing. But uh, we'll turn that off temporarily just so we can stop hearing that <laughs> sound over and over again. But uh, yeah, we need to get two ports. We need to get a, um, a reactor solid access port. I believe that's going to allow us to, uh, to input the fuel, in this case, uranium. So if we take this and we grab some of our uranium, we've got 2,400. Uh, let's go ahead and drop that uh, anywhere we like. We can go ahead and put it down like right here next to the controller if we want. So that should work. This block is not connected to a multi-block controller. Now it is. Okay, it just took a second to, uh, to connect there. So now if we put the uranium into the input slot, we should see in here that we have some core fuel. We've 6% filled this reactor. Perfect. Then after that, there is also the, uh, the need to take power out. That is where we can go to the Forge Energy Power Tap. I don't know. I never know which one of these we need. Active Forge Energy or Passive Forge Energy Power Tap. The, uh, the the Passive Forge Energy Power Tap is cheaper. So I'm going to assume that we probably need the active one, <laughs> if, I were, if I were to guess. So let's go ahead and drop this in right about here. That's going to let us pull the power out. Uh, somebody says, don't you need something to cool the reactor? So you don't have to. These reactors don't explode. They won't melt down. Uh, they're just going to be less efficient. So uh, if we fill this with fuel and turn it on, it will produce power, but it would produce more power um, for the same amount of fuel, or it would produce uh, more power with less fuel if we had coolant in the middle. Uh, but we're not really too worried about efficiency. We have infinite uranium. And so um, really, all we're going to do here is we're going to see how much power we generate. If we're not generating enough, we can look at adding some coolant uh, to try and eke out a bit more power. But I think for the most part, um, we should be fine here. So let's go ahead and grab a few stacks of uranium. You'll see that right now, if we start the reactor, you can start it when it's not full. If we turn it on, it's going to start producing some power. 
but the more fuel you have, the more power it produces. So already we're producing about three and a half thousand maybe RF per tick. Uh, if we turn this off and uh, pump it just full of uranium, try and get as much uranium in there as we can hold, try and get that uh, core fuel status up to 100%. You can see the uh, the Elorium filling in behind us. And of course, we are going to set an export bus here to uh, continually export the uranium into the reactor. Hopefully, we are producing more uranium than the reactor is using. Uh, if not, we might have to add a few more basins uh, to the uranium production line. But this is full, so now if we turn it on, we're producing a lot more power. Look at that, we're over 20,000. This should be more than enough. So now, what we want to do is we want to make a flux plug so that we can add that to this. And then at that point, we can start using this, uh, you know, 30,000 redstone flux per tick that we're producing here to massively increase the speed at which we're charging our HV capacitors. Uh, right now, it looks like we have 37 out of 320 fully charged. So that is fine. So in terms of making a flux plug, it looks like we need more flux cores, which means we do need more eyes of ender, which should be fine. We've got uh, a ton of blaze rods over here, thanks to our little blaze farm setup. So we'll grab just a bunch of blaze powder, craft those with some of our ender pearls. Again, we've got quite a few of those lying around as well. Let's just go ahead and get quite a lot of ender pearls. We'll then craft up the flux cores. Again, we'll make a few for now. I know we're going to need quite a few of these throughout the course of the remainder of today's stream. That's a flux block, and boom, there is our flux plug. So if we drop that down over here, we're now going to run into the next limiting factor, which is the uh, the HV capacitors. You'll see that this is only pulling about 500 to 800 RF per tick. The reason for that is that the HV capacitor itself is limited to 4,096 RF per tick. So you can't pump more than 4,096 RF per tick into a HV capacitor through one side. So you can pump more than that in, but we'd have to use multiple sides. And unfortunately, that's not really automatable. Like if we wanted to, uh, let me go ahead and request like a few more flux points. Let's say three more and start. What we could do is we could uh, right click here, change that to energy input, and then put this down and connect this up like so. And now this should start pulling 4,096 RF per tick as well. Oh no, this is full, which is why it's not uh, it's not doing it. But um, a few things have gone wrong here. The first thing that's gone wrong is that this no longer matches this. And the second thing that's going to go wrong, even if we break this, the next one that gets placed down isn't going to be able to take in power from this side, right? So this is just not going to connect. So we would have to right-click everyone manually in order to uh, to make this work. So unfortunately, I don't think this is worth doing. I think we should just go ahead and turn that back to, uh, to normal, at which point it's going to get broken and placed down. Um, I think the better way of doing this is just going to be to make like three or four more constructors and destructors and duplicate this setup a few times to increase the speed at which we run through the HV capacitors um, or charge up the HV capacitors that way. So it looks like we're producing about 27,000 RF per tick. If we divide that by 4,096, that means that we can run six more um, constructors and destructors at max speed. So I think we should just go ahead and do that. Uh, if we go ahead and type in Rukta, we can uh, request six more uh, destructors, start and start, and six more constructors, start, and we're missing glowstone, of all things, of course we are. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, quickly pop through to the nether to grab some glowstone, but uh, once we have those, in fact, we can just go ahead and do, uh, I think you could chisel these back. That chisel should be in here, totally is. Beautiful. There we go. So now we should be able to make uh, those uh, six constructors. And then uh, we can set these up. And that should start to, uh, to slowly but surely chug through those HV capacitors at a speed that is hopefully going to allow us to, uh, to have this completed maybe before the end of today's stream. Okay, so I've put it in this little uh, cupboard that we have here so that we don't end up with just a bunch of HV capacitors in the, uh, the main room of the base. So if I break these... I think I've configured them correctly, so they should all place down fresh HV capacitors. They totally do. And then we'll go ahead and drop these down on all of these. Again, we do to do it on the top as well, otherwise uh, the power's not going to go in. Uh, there is an item from Flux Networks called the uh, Flux Configurator. This guy right here, pretty nifty little device in that it allows you to kind of copy and paste your Flux Network configuration. So if you uh, shift right-click here, 
It's going to copy the configuration of this flux point. And then now over here, I can just right click on the other flux points and that's going to paste the configuration. So I don't have to go into each one and select my network manually every single time, which is, uh, is pretty nifty. And uh, so now we should see each one of these pulling 4,096 redstone flux per tick. They are indeed. Uh, all of these are filling up slowly but surely. And when they get full, they should then go ahead and be broken and deposited back into the system. And so in theory, we should now be... Uh, producing fully charged HV capacitors um, about seven times faster than we were previously because we have seven of them instead of just the one. And so if it was going to take 300 minutes before, now it should only take 42 minutes. On top of that, um, we already have 47 of them. So if we do 320 minus 47, uh, divide that by seven, about 39 minutes. So it really shouldn't take us too, too long to get all of these fully charged HV capacitors. And while we wait for those, we of course do need to get some ultimate ingots. So the other part of the craft that's not uh, fully charged HV capacitors is the ultimate catalyst. Uh, the ultimate catalyst requires luminescence, which is gonna require some more glowstone. And it also requires a black iron slate, which is easy enough, it's iron uh, and black dye. And then finally, we need the ultimate ingots. So I think we need eight of these in total two per ultimate catalyst. And so that means we're going to need eight of every single one of these ingots. Now, for a lot of these, that's really not going to be too bad. So, uh, for example, you know, iron, gold, netherite, that should be fine. Iron, we got 14,000. So dropping eight in, not a problem. Gold, we got 73,000. So again, not going to be a problem. Uh, the reason we got so much gold, by the way, is because gold is the only resource we're still actively making outside of our new fluid tank setup. Uh, gold is being made in this uh, compact machine here. But so uh, we can put in the gold. Do we have to do it in the top left? No, I have to do it like in the middle here. So iron, gold, and netherite. Then we've got a few ingots from Better End Forge. I think we have to go to the end for those. But then we have uh, copper, zinc, and brass. Okay, so copper we have. Uh, it does specify the one from Create, so I will take this one, even though we do have both. Uh, and in fact, we do already have nine copper ingots lying around. Uh, zinc, do we have eight zinc? We totally do. We'll grab eight of that. Uh, do we have eight brass? We do. Nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I assume the brass from Create is good. It is indeed. So we'll do uh, copper, zinc, and brass along the end there. Then we've got aluminum, lead, silver, nickel, uranium, uh, let's do those before we go any further. Uranium, aluminum, silver, lead, nickel, and uranium, I think was the order there. Ur aluminum, lead, silver, nickel, lead, silver, nickel, uranium, slash ylorium, that's fine. Then we've got constantan, electrum, steel, and hot graphite. Okay, that's where it gets a little tricky. So constantan we don't have, that's fine, we can get some. Electrum we do have. Steel we definitely have. Hop graphite we don't have, but we should be able to make. So um, if we need eight hop graphite ingots, that means that we need eight hop graphite dust, which is 64 coke dust, which is 64 cold coke. Uh, thankfully, we do have some cold coke left from the uh, the last time that we made a bunch of cold coke. So let's just go and quickly drop that into the old uh, crushing box over here. That should make its way through down into that chest, at which point we could, of course, uh, run it through the squeezer and get the, uh, the hop graphite ingots that we're after. Uh, also, real quick, let's go ahead and uh, silence, or at least quiet down that uh, crusher. And also, we're, we're out of food for the first time in, uh, in quite a while, so let's spend a quick minute here grabbing some more uh, sweet berries so we can make some more fruit salad. Once we have some more fruit salad, we can uh, head on back up to the surface here. Uh, apparently I didn't put enough copper in. I did not. I put in apparently air copper, which doesn't seem right, but that's uh, that's fine. So we've got electrum here, steel here, and then the hop graphite's gonna go there. Ironwood, fiery ingots, and night metal are all tinkers, uh, are all twilight forest ingots. We'll come back to those in a second. Uh, do we have cobalt? We do, it's just not in, uh, in a usable form currently. Uh, and annoyingly, you can't, you can blast it <laughs> in, a, in a blast furnace. Um, oh, there's an, a blasting augment. Allows for the blasting recipes. That might not be a bad idea, because I think that's going to allow us to use our... Um, our rainbow furnace, right? To make this happen. So we'll make a regular old blast furnace. And then if we upgrade to a blasting... Augment, can I then put that in here? And at that point, can I then do this? I totally can. Nice. Okay, so that's all the cobalt that we're going to need. Following cobalt, we need slime steel, 
Tinker's Bronze, Rose Gold, Pig Iron, Queen Slime, Manulane, and Hepatizen. Hepatizen, we've got just a staggering amount of, which, you know, wasn't intentional, but we do have a very, very large amount of, uh, of Hepatizen. That's going to go right at the end here. And then Manulane, I don't think we have, but we can definitely make. So a lot of the remaining items, um, we either have or we can make. So Manulane, we can make, because Manulane is just a an alloy of uh, Cobalt and Molten, uh, Ancient Debris which we can do. What else do we have here? We also have Queen Slime, this time for Magma Creams, Gold, and Cobalt. Again, all of that should be very doable. Uh, Pig Iron is an alloy. Clay, Blood, and Iron, that's doable. We can put our own blood in there, that's fine. Again, we only need one bucket of each of these. Um, although it might just be easier to make eight ingots worth of each of these instead of making buckets worth because we don't need that many uh, ultimate ingots. Again, I don't really think we need that many at all, to be honest. Um, We'll make the creative capacitor. We could then make the creative motor if we wanted to um, with the same recipe. And then after that, there are no other recipes that require ultimate ingots apart from the creative jetpack, which um, is not a required quest to get to the uh, the UV1 quest line. So eight is all we're going to need total. So a lot of these don't need to be uh, to be made on an infinite scale. Uh, rose gold is an alloy between gold and copper. That's fine. Then we've got uh, Tinker's Bronze, which is copper and tin. Slime Steel is another alloy. Of course it is. Uh, this one is uh, Molten Iron, Seared Stone, and Sky Slime. Sky Slime from Sky Slime Balls. I think we have Sky Slime, right? Yeah, we've got 302 Sky, uh, sky Slimes. So that's fine. And then the Hop Graphite we're working on. Constantan is another alloy. Uh, this one is Molten Nickel and Molten Copper. Again, we've got both of those. So they all should be fine. And then the Twilight Forest ingots, I think we have Ironwood. We've got six Ironwood. <laughs> can we make Ironwood ingots? I think you can, right? You craft the uh, the Ironwood materials. Yes, yeah, so I would need some more liver root, which we can go and get from the Twilight Forest if I don't have any. No, that should be fine. I think we've got some liver root before. It's... um very readily available um, i'll put these in just as a placeholder like that and then in terms of the fiery ingots you can get these by crafting an iron ingot and a fiery blood and or fiery tears i'm pretty sure that we do have all of that it might be my backpack no question mark oh no we got a shulker box right yeah of course here we go so we did put all of our twilight stuff in a shulker box right so we do have nine fiery tears and ten fiery blood so the fiery tears is it the same on both of these it's just a one-to-one -one both times it looks like it is which um which is fine right we only need eight so we can just take eight uh fiery tears combine that with eight iron ingots and you can see our iron's going up quite fast now, which is fantastic. And then over here, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. And in theory, oh, do you have to do these? Okay, it doesn't like when I try and shift click that out. It also doesn't like when I try to make more than like one. Like it does five and then I've got to do it again. I don't know why that is. Six. Seven and eight. Okay, not quite sure why that needed to be so long, but we do have the eight fiery ingots. We can drop those in uh, over here. I think it's down here, right? Not uh, up at the top. That's where the end ingots go. And then the only other twilight ingot required is the night metal. And the night metal we get by smelting armor shard clusters. So we don't have any night metal ingots, uh, but we can get the armor shard clusters from killing uh, certain mobs in the twilight forest. Again, we'll come back to that one. Um, for now, I think we might be able to make some of these better Endforge ones as well, actually. The, uh, Eternium, this one here, is Terminite and Netherite in an end, uh, an end stone smelter, which just needs some, some Thalassium, which I think is an end ore. It is. Okay. And then the, uh, Terminite is just iron and ender dust, and ender dust is just uh, a hammer and an ender pearl in an anvil. That seems very doable. Then there's the thalassium itself, which again is fine, and the terminite. So actually, all of that seems fine. Um, where is... I was going to say, where is our end portal? Well, I'm pretty sure it's right uh, right here. Uh, if we go through to the end, we should hopefully... Oh, got a free bit of stone. Um, we should... Look at the amount of ore. <laughs> look at the amount of biotite. <laughs> Staggering. Um, we should hopefully be able to find some of... The all that we're after fairly easily. I think it only spawns in 
better end forge biomes. So what we might have to do actually is we might want to grab uh, an ender pearl and come back and like shoot through one of these portals to see if we can't make that uh, make that happen. So let's see here if we fly through one of these. Does that put us anywhere near a better end forge biome? It totally does. Nice. And so we should hopefully see some thalassium. We totally do. Nice. Uh, we'll grab a bit of this. Again, we don't need a ton. We only need eight of, of each ingot, but we do need this for, for all three uh, all three end ingot tiers. And I think it's pretty common. Yeah, there's quite a lot of it around here. So 46 thalassium layered. So we can drop all this in here because we have that blasting augment, at which point we should then be able to look at making this guy, the uh, end stone smelter. It looks like we do need some kind of better end forge furnace. The recipe is too large. Oh, of course, we need to be in our, uh, in our crafting grid there. Uh, let's try and see if we have what it takes to make this. Uh, it says we're missing two better end forge furnaces. Um, although it looked like maybe just regular furnaces might work there. Even uh, If not, the better end forge furnaces are super easy to make. It's just uh, 16 end stone. So that is completely fine. From there, we can craft up our end stone smelter. Uh, again, for now, let's go ahead and drop this down, maybe like here. And then at that point, I think we should be good to go here. So let's put, uh, let's get eight thalassium and let's go ahead and drop that directly into the uh, the ultimate crafting table over here. We'll just pop that in. I think it was right about there. That is correct. Next up is the uh, terminite. This one here. Uh, so this one needs the iron ingots and the ender dust. And the ender dust is just a hammer with an ender pearl, which seems fine. Oh, I see. So you either need a netherite or an, uh, you, you need a netherite hammer for this. That's fine. I think we can probably make the, uh, the netherite hammer. If I were to guess, we don't have the netherite just yet, but, uh, it should be very makeable. There's a diamond hammer. And then, uh, if we get some netherite, we can take that over to our smithing table and then boom and boom, we get the netherite smithing hammer and then now if we go to an anvil over here we can drop in the hammer and the ender pearl and then we'll take all eight of those i guess that is a horrific sound <laughs> but now back over here if we grab uh, eight iron ingots one two three four five six seven and eight we can drop in these uh we can drop in these sorry and these and then do we just put in regular old fuel for this we totally do i'm hoping that just coal will work it doesn't, it has to be blocks of coal for some reason. That is completely fine. And also for whatever reason, it is just uh, just painfully slow. Uh, I don't know if having a different fuel makes it any faster. No, it still looks like it's 22 seconds either way you uh, slice it here. That's fine. That will eventually get us the, uh, the eight uh, terminite that we need there. And then the final end ingot there we need for the uh, ultimate ingot here is this one eternium and the eternium is termite plus netherite so actually it looks like we need um double the number of these right we need uh, 16 of these not eight that is fine let's grab eight more ender pearls let's listen to that hor horrific sound again you love to hear it let's drop that in over here boom and we'll get eight more iron ingots And boom. And once that's done, we can then put the eight terminite directly in, and then we can start crafting up the uh, eight atonium. Again, that should be completely fine. We can just go ahead and request the remaining six netherite that we need there. And that should be those ingots taken care of. So that's basically the whole first line done. The whole second line is almost done. Our hop graphite dust uh, should be ready to be made if we go and do something like that. That should uh, hopefully very quickly uh, produce the, uh, the eight Hop graphite dust that we need. Look at that. You love to see it. And then from there, we just need to smelt that up, right? In our uh, rainbow furnace. Beautiful. At which point we have eight hop graphite dust. Uh, hop graphite ingots even. Nice. So we'll drop those in. Uh, so now the only thing we're missing on that line is Constantin. And yeah, I think we should be pretty much good to go here. Um, before we start with all of the alloys, because all of the alloys are going to be uh, easy enough that's going to be a little time consuming. Let's see about this night metal ingot because that's the only one that's left that is re even remotely tricky. The rest of these are completely fine. Uh, also, let's do a quick check up on our HV capacitors. Um, I don't know which one of these is. I think it's the 68 one that's full. 
I would assume. Oh no, I'm an absolute fool. It's a good thing I caught that when I did because I didn't set this to, um, first of all, it's off, <laughs> which is a problem. Um, there's a few problems that we have here. Um, one is that this appears to be offline. The second is that uh, I didn't put an exporter down to export the uh, the fuel here. And the third is that we actually need a second uh, access port because this does also produce waste that we need to uh, remove as well in order to, uh, to maintain maximum operating efficiency. So we want to do this. Uh, we want to make sure it's set to output, like so. And then we want to get an importer on that, like this. And then, of course, we can just run this down into the floor and then along and connect it to our main network. Okay, so this is back online, and now we have our importer and our exporter. So we should, hopefully, be producing power at full speed here. So we do have 80 done. We've got 230 to go, which hopefully won't take us too, too long. Um, again, while we wait for that, though, let's head on through to the uh, the Twilight Forest and see if we can't get some more of these uh, these shards. So, actually, real quick. Let's get the uh, the magic map. And I think that we're heading to either like this one here behind the iron or this one up here. I forget specifically which one it is that we're going to. Um, we're heading to the one that's like an underground I think it's over here, because I'm pretty sure it's under the um, the Dark Forest, and down here looks to be the Dark Forest. Yeah, so I think just down below here. Yeah, this is the place that we're after. So I believe that one of the easiest ways, and actually I might not be able to get down here. I might need, um, cause I don't, unless this is the one we came to last time, uh, I might have to bring another, uh, another trophy head to get down into the, uh, yeah, I need to put another, another trophy thing here in order to get, uh, to get in there. Unfortunately, I didn't bring the, um, the head with me. So I think these guys are the guys that we're trying to kill, by the way. Um, you're not guaranteed, I don't think, to get the armor piece, but I'm pretty sure we're looking for those guys, but, uh... But, like, under underground. So one quick Naga kill later, and that totally does work. So now, let's see if we can't find a spawner to make this a little easier on us. Ah, so these are the guys that we're after, right? These little goblins. I'm pretty sure that killing these guys uh, gives us a chance. I don't know about the, um, the, the non-armored guys, but I think these little dudes... The block and chain goblins. I think they give us a chance to get the armor shards. And then you can, oh gosh, you can craft nine armor shards into an armor cluster. And then we need eight armor clusters to get the ultimate ingot, right? So we might have to kill a couple of, uh, just a couple of goblins here. Um, ideally, though, we'd find some kind of spawner. Again, we'll take more of these just in case. Uh, but we'll find some kind of spawner. Um, I think a hermit crab spawner is the easiest. That's going to allow us to, uh, to do this a bit faster. What do we have here? We got a spawner. Hello, hermit crabs. Oh, these are helmet crabs. I think it's what we're after, though. I think these guys might also have a chance of spawning, of dropping what we're after. They do. Look at that. Okay, perfect. And uh, it looks like there might be a few spawners here, so hopefully we can uh, rather quickly... We've also got bone shield. Uh, we can hopefully rather quickly acquire the 72 of these that we need. People do make a good point in that we can uh, silk touch... Yes. <laughs> in that we can silk touch the spawner. And then we could potentially take it back and, uh, and maybe speed it up like we have with the uh, the witch spawner. So if we do this, I'm hopeful. Uh, my pickaxe is, uh, is broken here. But uh, I'm hopeful that we should be able to use some of our sugar to make this faster. There we go. That's as fast as it'll go. And then from there, there's uh, a few others that we can add, of course. Uh, we can add clocks to the mix. Uh, I forget exactly what the clocks do, although I'm pretty sure it will tell me here. The clocks, I think they decrease the uh, the delay. Decrease the maximum spawn delay. And thankfully we've got a ton of redstone and a ton of gold. So making, uh, you know, 64 clocks here nice and easy. Drop those in. 
So we can also add fermented spider eyes to increase spawn count. And then the ghastly increases max entities. Increases player range, increases spawn range. The blaze powder, the blaze rods could be useful there. Uh, and then there's a few more that are expensive. Increases spawn cap is the uh, the chorus fruit. We don't have any chorus fruit, unfortunately. Um, I can add uh, a stack of blaze rods, and not as many blaze rods as, uh, as we'd like into the mix there. It's going to increase the range just a little bit. I also didn't know you could put blaze rods down like this. That's, uh, that's cool. That does appear to be an add-on mod, though. Then, uh, fermented spider eyes. I don't think we have... We do have some spider eyes. Do we have what it takes to make some fermented spider eyes? Because that would make it a bit faster. Mushrooms are probably something we don't have. We got a few mushrooms. <laughs> you know what? Let's go for it. Let's make like eight fermented spider eyes and let's just add those to make this a tiny bit faster. <laughs> so it looks like they're spawning in the smeltery. Because the smeltery here is just slowly but surely filling up with fish and with um, armor shards. So it looks like they spawn in. For some reason, they seem to be spawning like exclusively in the smeltery. Oh no, there's some- wow, okay, so the, the blaze rods really do increase the range, eh? Jeez! I didn't think the range was gonna be that insane! I thought the range would be like- the, the range increase would be- would be minimal. But it looks like the- um, The range is- is massive! Like, they really are, are spawning just... All over the place. Interesting. Uh, while we wait for that, uh, over here this is done, so we can take that out and then start again with the- uh, the netherite, which I assume is gonna be even slower than- uh, than before. Yeah, for some reason that's just incredibly slow. But uh, we are slowly but surely getting all of the armor shards that we need here. All right, I think that is everything. Let's go ahead and take down the uh, the hermit crab spawner. Let's go and craft up our final armor shard. We'll drop all of those into here. And then at that point, we should have all of the knight metal ingots that we need. Nice. And we also, of course, have all of the iron wood. We've got some extra here, but that is fine. And so I think, Chad, that we are pretty much good to go. We've got uh, eight of the uh, Terminite right there. Over here, this is slowly but surely, and we're almost there on the uh, Eternium. And then after that, the only things left are just alloys, right? It's only alloys that we have left to, uh, to do. And I think we did. Did we get all of the mechanical crafters? We didn't. We are going to have to up the number of mechanical crafters that we have to, uh, to 81. But I think, Chad, that this is going to be fairly doable. So now it's just a case of making all of the remaining uh, ingots here. And, and basically all of them are just alloys made in the uh, the Tinker's Construct smeltery. So uh, I guess let's go ahead and do that. And let's hope that uh, the remaining 95, I think this is now the number that's left, not the number that's to go like i think we've done yeah we've done 224 we've got 92 left to go and so um even if we're not fully done we can start the crafts right because we've got to put 80 in at a time uh, so we can start doing the crafts even if we're not fully finished and hopefully by the time that we are finished the the last ones will be ready to go but to be yeah let's go ahead and make some uh, some alloys shall we all right so quite a bit of alloy making later we're just doing constantine here uh, but we have let me quickly clear my inventory a little bit of all of the extra junk that we do not need to be carrying around with us at all times but uh, right here, also we've got a few things that we could probably put back into our uh, our backpack here for the time being. We don't need to carry all this either. But uh, we've got uh, Constantin, Queen Slime, Manulin, Rose Gold, Tinkers, Bronze, Slime Steel, and Pig Iron. I made them all in block form, just because making nine and then pulling them out uh, into the casting basin is easier than pulling out eight ingots every single time. Uh, also, side note, the uh, Tinkers Bronze. Normally bronze is made with uh, copper and tin. In this pack, it's made with copper and glass because there is no tin in this uh, in this pack. But uh, either way, I think that we have nine of all of these here. And so back over in here, we can drop the Constantin minus one in there. Uh, the Pig Iron. So people told me maybe that I'm off here, by the way. Uh, let me have a look. Oh, here we are. We need to move everything up by one. You'll see there's only two lines from the top, and I've done three lines here. So let's just quickly shimmy all of these up by one. I'm not quite sure if it matters. It might have worked either way. Um, I know Manulin goes here. And then what else do we have? So we've got Queen Slime, Pig Iron, Rose Gold, Tinker's Bronze, Slime Steel. Okay, so that was uh, Queen Slime, Pig Iron, uh, Rose Gold, Tinker's Bronze, and Slime Steel. And hopefully, if all is well, that should be eight ultimate ingots. Nice. Look at that. So now we have got 297 full HV capacitors. So we need to get our mechanical crafters. We have got 49 of them. We need 81 of them. 
So we need 32 more. Thankfully, our system is up to the task. Beautiful. So now we need to get these down and then we need to power them. So thankfully, I think that this room right here might do the trick. If I do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that does appear to be kind of perfect. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is just about right. Uh, can I use a wand here or is that not? Is that not allowed? That appears to be not allowed. That is fine. We can put these down manually. And then it's just a case of filling them in, getting the uh, the power of our incredibly fast wind turbine over there, over into these mechanical crafters, and we should be able to start making the, um, the components. Okay. They're all down. Uh, as per usual, <laughs> we do need to uh, make sure that all of these point to a final destination. Thankfully, they all kind of defaulted to pointing down here. So uh, basically they can all just go to a, a single final point that is right there. Do we have a bunch of cogs? We do. Do we have some shaft? We also do. It's going to be extraordinarily janky, but I think if we just kind of do something um, a little bit like this, that should work. We can just put the shaft uh, here and there we go. That's all spinning away albeit very slowly. And so now we can start taking uh, full HV capacitors and putting them in here. Um, again, we're looking to make the uh, creative capacitor. So we need we need the ultimate catalyst in the middle. Uh, let's go ahead and make those real quick. So we'll come back to this in just a second. Uh, chat is right that my uh, top right here is the wrong direction. Let's just rotate that real quick. Let's get this in. And I think we're good to go, chat. I think we are good to go. So, um... I mean, if it was good to go, these would start moving, I'm pretty sure. Uh... <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, chat is right. It is moving, of course. Uh, we do, of course, have the speed controller, which I should probably just use, uh, because I imagine uh, that we might not be utilizing uh, the full force of um of what's going on here just yet so real quick if i break this and do something like this and like this do we have uh, a gearbox r22 lying around we totally do um and so at that point we can just go ahead and uh and do something like this and this and this and this okay so that instantly broke i'm not quite sure why that instantly broke Oh, I guess it's just not allowed to touch that, eh? So if we just do that, I see. Okay, four is as fast as it can go. I don't know if that's faster than we were at before or not, but it is working. It's moving down. Um, the, the top left one, I'm pretty sure was empty when I started. It's going to fail, right? Can I can I cancel this? Can I break this? And that? Oh, my goodness. I had to cancel it because um, otherwise the uh, it wasn't going to work. The fact that there was nothing in the top one there. Um, I'm not quite sure why it started when it wasn't going to work, but uh, that, it, it wasn't going to work. Uh, due to the fact that that top one wasn't in. It was going to get to the end and then break. So let's just try that one more time. Okay, this looks like it should work. I'm pretty sure everything is in the right orientation. I'm pretty sure everything is, is correct. Things are moving down. And so ideally, this should, in theory, get the job done. The only trouble here is just how slow it's going, thanks to our uh, our very slow uh, kinetic generator here, the, uh, the wind turbine. It can only do... Uh, 1,024 stress units. And we've got eight. Uh, we've got 81 of these using eight stress units each. Okay, so I've added some more sails here to hopefully make this a little bit faster. I don't think, yeah, that doesn't interrupt the, uh, the process. Can I go up to eight? I can because we're now d we've doubled our stress units. But I think that's it. I don't think I can go up to, th to 12. Oh, no, I can go up to 12. Okay, that's good. So we should be a, a, a little bit faster. It's still not incredibly fast. What about 16? 16 is too much. Okay. We'll stick to... We won't get greedy. We'll stick to 12 for now, <laughs> I guess. But uh, this should... Produces our, uh, our first of four components. And then we just need to do it a few more times. Yeah, 
Here we goes. And boom, look at that. Beautiful. You love to see it. Okay. That's one. Three to go. Okay. Chat. Jeez. Here we go. The riveting. High octane gameplay viewing experience that you're all here to see, to witness, to behold. Feast your eyes upon the magnificence. Keep all this in the video. <laughs> 10 out of 10 content. All right, chat. It's taken a while, but we have three of the four ultimate catalysts. The fourth one is currently being crafted. And there we go. We have four ultimate catalysts. And so finally, we can craft one, two, three, four ultimate catalysts with a HV capacitor. And boom, we have a creative capacitor. Uh, and so now if we go behind this wall of mechanical crafters, uh, we can, if we want, just plop this down like right about here. And now we have an infinite amount of redstone flux being produced. We can go ahead and disconnect the, uh, the reactor here. We can turn the reactor off. Doesn't need to be on anymore. Uh, this guy right here, I don't know if the top is set to uh, to input or to output by default. Uh, let's have a look here. Uh, right now, the top is set to energy output. I imagine all the sides, yeah, set to, to energy output, because why would you want to input into this? But you'll see in the top left there, we've got 2.1 gif, gif, gif 2.1 billion redstone flux. Uh, but really, we have an infinite amount of redstone flux for whatever we would like to use it for. And more importantly, we have completed this quest right here. And I think that's probably going to do it for today's stream. Next time we'll come back, we'll start looking at the ultimate catalyst. Again, we're working on a lot of those over here. Uh, we might have to add some uh, upgrades to these compacting drawers to allow them to hold enough. But I'll, actually, we probably won't because we only need uh, 10,000 of each item. And we've already got more than 10,000 of, uh, of most of these. For some reason, a few of these are a little slower than others. But um, we should, hopefully, by the time next episode rolls around, have 10,000 of all those. So next time we'll come back, we'll look at working on the ones that uh, we don't have 10,000 of, like uh, cactus, kelp, and dried kelp. Um, and also the andesite alloy and the uh, the slates. Uh, we'll also look at uh, setting up the auto crafts required to make the infinite storage part and infinite fluid storage part. Uh, we might make the creative motor, although I'll probably save that to the very end. And we'll potentially look at uh, getting started with mine colonies and or with the uh, Britannia quest here again. This is mostly just a lot of mana, which is very doable. We are also going to have to fight the guy and make some runes. Nothing too crazy, though. But uh, we're getting very close to the end of Cave Factory. Unfortunately, though, chat, that is where we're going to have to wrap up for today's stream.